about 150,000 Saudi students studying overseas, uh, uh, 83,000 or so in the United States. That's just one part of the higher education program, though, because uh, they have gone from eight to about 32 universities over the last generation. So you have this explosion of new universities in Saudi Arabia. You have a, a, a group of old established universities uh, like King Abdulaziz and, and, and Jeddah, King Faisal, uh, uh, King Saud, KFUPM has a long tradition in oil and gas business, uh, King Khalid um, down in uh, Abha, uh, and, and these universities are all growing, but then you've got the explosion of new universities, and, and we had a chance to visit these new universities in Heil and Sakaka, uh, Arar, uh, Kasim is uh, expanding uh, quite a bit, Jazan, and of course the uh, um, the biggest one of these new universities is of course Princess Noura in Riyadh where you now have 40,000 uh, Saudi women studying in a university that did not exist in 2009. Um, the challenge for Saudi Arabia is that while you've got to acknowledge the commitment to that infrastructure, the easy part is building the building. The challenging part is what's behind the walls. And, uh, and on this you'd have to say that, that the expansion and commitment to education really is it in an infant stage because while you have the facilities being created, the curriculum, uh, all of those things that uh, you need to have a world-class education are still developing. The good news is that a large number of these uh, students studying in the United States and other countries are earmarked to come back to these universities uh, as professors. So the potential is there. Um, it, it's going to take a while for all of this to evolve and for them to build a world-class uh, higher education system.